good evening all welcome to this new session we will try to see diffusion weighted imaging and its significance from head to toe uh, in different clinical perspectives so this is the first case uh, 26 year male with history of rta now unconscious and presenting with seizures here you can see there is restricted diffusion radio blade noted in spina of carpus callosum even at some pericolosal area and in subcortical vertebral parietal frontal lobes and even left parietal lobe uh, with low adc values so this was a case of diffuse axial injury so diffusion weighted imaging is a key sequence in help in diagnosing diffuse axial injury and if you are suspecting diffuse axial injury so here also you can see there is typical edema noted in the body and spin of carpus callosum which is showing restricted diffusion and DWI. so diffusion weighted imaging is a key sequence in diagnosing diffuse axial injury and grading of dye next case here you can see 42 year male with history of headache scissors and ataxia you can see there is a cystic lesion uh, noted in the right CP angle which is hyperintense on T1, hyperintense on T2 showing incomplete suppression on flare showing classical restricted diffusion on DWA so uh, generally diff and there is no significant enhancement on IV contrast so differentials can be epidermoid cyst or arachnoid cyst but diffusion weighted imaging helps in differentiating epidermoid cyst from arachnoid cyst because uh, restricted diffusion and DWA is seen in epidermoid cyst and it is mostly not seen in arachnoid cyst and uh, this is also a case of classical black epidermoid because it is showing restricted diffusion and DWI whereas a typical white epidermoid will not show restricted diffusion and DWI pause the slide and see the three differences between classical black epidermoid, epitypical white epidermoid and dermoid cyst so DWI helps in differentiating epidermoid cyst from arachnoid cyst next case here you can see diffusion weighted imaging also helps in differentiating abscess from uh, necrotic or cystic tumors like gbm and even cystic metastasis so whenever you have get a cystic lesion in the brain with adjacent perilesial edema and if you are confused try to use diffusion weighted imaging as one of the sequence to differentiate them so here you can see this is the abscess where you can see restricted diffusion DWI in the core with low ADC values but whereas in gbm and metastasis there will not be any restricted diffusion DWI in the core and the ADC will be high here also you can see that there is no restricted diffusion in DWI so this was a case of abscess this was a case of GBM this was a case of metastasis so diffusion weighted imaging helps in differentiating abscess from necrotic tumor and metastasis these are the other features where you can pause the slide and see which helps in differentiating glioblastoma from abscess because dual rim sign in C is an abscess which is absent in glioblastoma next 8 year child with history of fever and altered sensorium you can see there is a restricted diffusion DWI in the spinae of carpus callosum this is commonly say, labeled as transient lesion in spinae of carpus callosum and even clocks that is cytotoxic lesions of carpus callosum so the restricted diffusion uh, in DWI in spinae of carpus callosum helps in identifying uh, clocks next this was also other case where this is a 35 year chronic alcoholic with rapid onset of uh, seizures uh, and uh, apraxia and seizures you can see there is restricted diffusion DWI in the spina of carpus callosum with low ADC values and these signal changes are not clearly depicted in the other sequences so this was uh, so whenever you uh, see an alcoholic with uh, restricted diffusion DWI in spina of carpus callosum or in the carpus callosum definitely suspect uh, much of a bagnama disease so restricted diffusion of DWI helps in uh, in chronic alcoholics gives clue to suspect much of a big dummy disease next this is also a much of a big dummy disease but it is a chronic cases you can see there is cavitation and necrosis in the body and spin of carpus callosum but sparing of the uh, ex uh, dorsal and ventral extremes so this gives the classical sandwich appearance so remember sandwich sign in chronic much of a big dummy disease next uh, this was a case of postpartum uh, lady presenting with uh, altered sensorium and scissors you can see there is restricted diffusion on DWI in the internal capsule and even in the along the corticospinal tracts and even in the spinae of carpus callosum and along the crust cerebri and along the corticospinal tracts and in the middle cerebellar peduncles so whenever you get symmetrical restricted diffusion and DWI in the internal capsule along the corona radiata along the corticospinal tracts involving the spinae of carpus callosum in a wine glass pattern so this in a coronal sections this clearly resembles the wine glass pattern uh, so this resembles the wine glass pattern so wine glass pattern of hyperintensive or DWI definitely suspect in a postpartum case suspect postpartum hypernatremic encephalopathy so this is a case of uh, this like this is like an osmotic demyelination so whenever you see wine glass pattern suspect postpartum hypernatremic encephalopathy next case uh, even here you can see there is a restricted diffusion DWI in the left frontal lobe convex T here you can see on the flare images you can see there is extra lesion so diffusion weighted imaging also helps in identifying 
uh, subtle convexity meningiomas so sometimes convexity meningiomas can be missed on routine sequences but try to see for any restricted diffusion DW in the convexities which may help in identifying subtle convexity meningiomas next uh, here this was a case of glioma uh, here you can see there is a peripheral bright rim sign or bright rim sign noted along the uh, glioma in case of high uh, b values when high b values by b values are used on diffusion weighted imaging so bright edge sign or bright rim sign this is the bright edge sign or bright rim sign uh, on high b value dwa which is an accurate predictor of extremely poor prognosis in glioma patients so whenever you see this bright edge sign which uh, predicts poor prognosis of the glioma uh, regardless regarding regardless of the pathological grades so remember bright edge sign as a predictor for poor prognosis in gliomas next uh, this was a case of primary cns lymphoma here you can see uh, there is a hyperintense lesion in the periventricular location adjacent to frontal horn in uh, t2 which is showing restricted diffusion dwi with low adc values and showing intense enhancement so diffusion weighted imaging helps in differentiating uh, primary CNS lymphomas from other uh, causes of uh, tumors like malignant gliomas or metastasis. Next this was a case of optic neuritis. Here you can see there is classical restricted diffusion DWI in both optic nerves. Here also you can see there is restricted, restricted diffusion DWI in the optic nerves and even in the optic nerve heads which, because this was a case of optic neuritis with papilledema. This was also a case of optic neuritis. So diffusion weighted imaging helps in uh, identifying uh, optic neuritis due to ischemic or traumatic causes and helps to differentiate ischemic and traumatic optic neuropathies and neuritis from other causes like autoimmune causes. So, next this was a case which already discussed uh, pre by pre previously by me. Here you can see this is a newborn presenting with vomiting, scissors and uh, sweet smell of the urine. You can see classical restricted diffusion redoubling in the brainstem and cerebellum and extending along the corticospinal tracts with low ADC values. This was a case of maple syrup urine disease. So whenever you see classical restricted diffusion red blood in the brainstem and cerebellum in a child with sweet smell of the urine, definitely suspect maple syrup urine disease. Next, uh, this was a case of spinal cord ischemia. You can see hyperintensity in the spinal cord on T2 and showing classical restricted diffusion on DWA. So DWA helps in identifying ischemic lesions in the spinal cord. Next, this was another case. Uh, the, here you can see there is this uh, there is called as classically called as class sign. So this what is this class sign on DWA? This class sign on DWA is nothing but seen in type one modic changes, and this class sign helps in differentiating type one modic changes from the oste infective causes like osteomyelitis. So this is the cla where you can see this is the class sign. This is the class sign. So class sign on DWA helps in differentiating uh, modic type 1 degenerative changes from infective or oste infective or other causes like oste infective causes or osteomyelitis. Because um, uh, this modic type of uh, t changes are low on T1 and high on T2. Even in infection it will be low on T2 and high on T2, high on T1, low on T1 and high on T2. So this class sign helps in differentiating modic type 1 changes from infective or osteomyelitis causes. Next, even this uh, DWA helps in differentiating uh, osteoporotic compression fracture. So this was an osteoporotic compression fracture, but this was a uh, ovarian metastasis to the cervical vertebra. So this was a pathological fracture. So DWA will not be uh, seen in case of uh, osteoporotic fra compression fracture, whereas DWA will be seen in uh, pathological fractures or malignant compression fractures. And even ADC values will be significantly lower in malignant pathological fractures when compared with benign compression fractures. Next, even DWA helps in uh, uh, whole body MRI. When you take whole body MRI, DWA helps in identifying multiple lesions and even metastasis in known case of primaries. So this was a case of metastatic melanoma. You can see there are multiple lesions scattered in whole of the body on whole body MRI. Next, uh, DWA also helps in identifying hepatocellular carcinoma. So this was a case of hepatocellular carcinoma which is showing restricted diffusion DWA with low ADC values. Here also even DWA helps in identifying the RCC. This is showing restricted diffusion DWA with low ADC values. This was a case of RCC. Next even uh, DWA helps in identifying the pancreatic tumors. Here you can see this is the pancreatic carcinoma tumor showing restricted diffusion DWA with low ADC values. Here also in the breast it's showing restricted diffusion DWA with low ADC values. This was a case of breast carcinoma. And even this was a case of prostatic carcinoma, you can see restricted diffusion in the periphery zone, uh, which is showing restricted diffusion DWA with low ADC values. This was a case of prostatic carcinoma. So summing up, uh, DWA is very important sequence in diagnosing from head to toe along with the other sequences. So it is very helpful in diagnosing the first case. This is the diffuse action injury. So second case, uh, diffusion helps in identifying differentiating epidermoid cyst from arachnoid cyst. 
Diffusion weighted imaging helps in uh, differentiating cerebral abscess from uh, GBM and metastasis. Diffusion weighted imaging showing wine glass pattern in postpartum hypernatric encephalopathy. Diffusion weighted imaging helps in identifying uh, optic neuritis or neuropathy secondary to ischemic or traumatic causes. This was a case of maple syrup urine disease. And class N and DWA helps in differentiating type 1 modic changes from osteomyelitis. And even diffusion weighted imaging helps in differentiating benign or uh, osteoporotic compression fractures from pathological or malignant compression fractures. Thank you all.